What type of student was Monique? I read that you were in, I don't know if this is the correct way, but you were in a, the class that. The slower one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Yeah, you, uh, you had a couple. Say it, baby, now. I want you to you say it. You want me to it. Say, uh, Spell it out. Uh, how about this here? Uh, <laughs> hey. You got two naps. You had two recesses. Okay, okay. And you stayed in the same Okay, but I did not wear a helmet. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> now, since you want to go there, I did not have to wear that helmet, baby. So, yes. Mon, Mon as, as I sit here with you today, you didn't all of a sudden become this advanced. Why were you in that class? I'm not going to play with you, Shannon. Okay, some of them damn words Kat was using. I was like, what? <laughs> oh. I said, oh, he's sucking it to him. You know, I never connected with school oh, because okay. I always felt like it wasn't adding up. So when you're trying to teach me about the Boston Tea Party, but people that look like me is at the bottom of the boat, I can't connect to what you're saying. I never connected to, because I always felt like something was off. When they were teaching me about history, we were always the the savages and we were always Mm -hmm. the bad people. And then you saw these white people be all the heroes. And as a little girl, I said, something's not adding up. So... I don't look at that as a bad thing. I just didn't connect with it. It made no sense to me. So you never had a problem with the learning, but the disconnect was what what they was teaching and what you actually saw. you like, what you teaching me is not what I actually see. You know what, Shannon? It's a combination. Okay. It was a combination, okay? I wasn't grasping it and I didn't believe it. So it's a combination. And when you have a child that is full of energy right. and is sitting in a classroom yeah. that is closed in all day long and you're trying to tell me all that I'm not. Mm-hmm. It just did not add up to me. It just did not make sense to me. So uh, there's no shame to it. When people say, was you in the soul class? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you know, we colored. So when you... <laughs> hey, baby, we colored. <laughs> but don't overlook what you don't think is the package supposed to be. Right. See, again, we come back to the messenger. Nobody thought that I would be and, and I'll go to my family. Like nobody thought, not the fat one. She's not going to be the one. Not her. So I've been, I've been used to people doubting and counting me out. And for me as that little girl, it's like one day, one day, one day. And that one day is right here. Even your family. So how, how was your family? How was your, your, your brothers and sisters? Because I mean, uh, look, we join I me. Mean, I got, bro, I got a brother and sister and you know, we joke with each other and, and I can imagine if, if the situation were, if um, one of us was in those class, oh, we gonna, we gonna get them jokes off, Monique. I'm just, it is what it is. No one paid enough attention. Really? Like no one paid enough attention because though we lived in a household together, we were very individual. So no one even paid attention to what was really going on and to include my parents. And that's not a victim story. That's not, oh, what was me? It's just what it was. So it wasn't like, oh, you dummy. The jokes were always fat. They were always fat jokes. Mm-hmm. But, okay, so I'm so used to that. But Are you was, the only one in your family this Baby, time? the only one that sneaks snacks. <laughs> I'm the only one that'll sneak them damn snacks, Shannon. Right. I'm the only one, yes. So, how would, so, what, so what would you say your relationship then and now was with your family? Well... My relationship now with my family, they're my biological family, and I wish them well. Ah, Mo. Here's the thing. I watched you do in, uh, I think it was like a little clip, and they were talking about interracial dating. Yes. And you said, why would somebody stay where they're miserable? Right. That applies everywhere, Shannon. It just doesn't apply to that, especially in our community. We've been taught, take care of your family. Make sure, well, there are some families that deserve it. And there are some families that you have to say, listen, I'm so glad we had this time together. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's where I am with mine. Mm -hmm. I wish all of them the best. But that's what it is. So even as I sit here with you now, with all that's going on in Hollywood and all of the, the, the stuff I had to go through, I've already been through it with people that you call your family. And I have to say, you know what? That has to just wash off when I know what I'm standing in and what I'm standing on. You're absolutely right, Monique. My grandmother used to always tell us, she'd say, son, teeth and tongue may fall out, but family never should. 
And she stood on that. No matter what transpired in the family, no matter what, how bad someone had treated you, you should never fall out. But hearing you say that that's different because just because we're blood, that doesn't mean we're fa we're family through blood. But sometimes it's somebody on the outside that's not blood that's actually closer family yes. than the actual biological. We've been taught to say trauma is OK. We've been taught to say you mistreated me, you abused me, you violated me, you disrespected me, you belittled me. But I'm supposed to look at you at Thanksgiving and say, how you doing, Unc? That's what we've been taught. You swallow that pain. That's why people have such a problem with Cat Williams. People have a problem with people that says, I'm going to tell the truth. I'm going to tell the truth. And that causes a ruckus. And you would say, why are people upset with the truth? Mm. When you hear Steve Harvey say there are repercussions when you tell the truth. Well, remember when we were children? Mm -hmm. What would your grandmother tell you? Tell the truth. Tell the truth, because if not, there will be Re what? Repercussions. Right. Well, now it's got turned around. When you tell the truth, there'll be repercussions. So what's the opposite of that? Should I tell a lie and get a reward? So that's how we're rolling right now. That's mm -hmm. how we're dealing with one another right now. So when it comes to family and people saying, oh, Monique, how could you? Listen, I want to live the rest of this journey that I have in peace. I want to be with my family, in love with my man, he in love with me. We watch our babies grow and develop their own families. I don't need anything in the midst of that because you family that I should accept that trauma I should accept you not taking accountability for what you've done, what you've said, and we just washed a slate. That's why we're in the position we are now as a community, mm -hmm. as a black community, as a community in entertainment. Everybody's been so afraid to say, look what they did to me. Look what they said. And it's like, oh, well, listen now, we don't want to ruffle no feathers, feathers, especially if the messenger doesn't fit the what people should think the messenger is supposed to look like right. and we keep repeating history shannon is it a situation monique where people look and say well you made it thus far well it couldn't have been that bad because if it has been as bad as you say it is monique how would you have ever gotten out of be more how would you have ever gotten into hollywood how would you ever have a talk show how would you ever be on a sitcom so how is it that bad monique and you end up like this you know, when you first got in the NFL, yes, man. your eyes were like this. Yes. And it was, oh, I made it. I'm here. Right. And then after you start getting in it and you started seeing things and you started feeling things and you start, now your eyes start getting a little closer because now you're understanding right. what the business is. Right. So when you first walk through the door, you're walking through the door saying, come on, baby. Oh, this is all I've ever prayed for. And when my baby Cat Williams sat here and said, no one's ever gone out to L.A. and got a sitcom like that. I was in LA for three months and here comes a show called The Parkers. And there we go from there. It, it, it took off from there. So I think that when people say, if it was so bad, you mature, you begin to understand what you're dealing with. Right. You begin to understand what you're in the midst of. And once you understand it is when you can speak on it. Right. But before you really know what you're looking at, how do you speak on that? Right. Because when you first walk in the door of Hollywood, you have everybody telling you, oh, my goodness, you're going to be amazing. Oh, my goodness. This is going to be incredible. Well, that's all you know. That is all you know. Yes. But you're so happy to be here. Yes. And you're like, OK. When you, when I listen to your story, mm -hmm. you say dirt poor. Yes. Bathroom outside. Yes. It was, we had to make it work however we can make it work. Correct. And then you get that first big check. Yes. And you think the people that gave it to you was awesome mm -hmm. because they gave it to you. And it's more money than you've ever seen before until you find out this ain't the right money. This ain't the right amount. Wait a minute. If they got this, why am I getting this? Then you start putting the pieces together and you start saying it's not right. And I'm going to speak about it. See, when I saw Taraji mm -hmm. broken mm -hmm. on those platforms 
It was painful to watch. However, Taraji and I had a conversation over a decade ago. Yes. In my trailer Mm -hmm. when I was doing the Monique show. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know, you got to keep on getting it until your turn comes. And I said, Taraji, most of us die before our turn comes. We got to ask for it right now. Now, I understand that because there was a time I felt the same way. Exactly. Because that's what I was told. Right. You just keep going and we'll get them the next time. We'll get them the next time. We'll get them the next time. And the next time never comes. And then you see our sister broken, sitting on those platforms. Now, when I said it, when I said it. Why didn't it get the traction when you said it that when she said it, now all of a sudden everybody is coming and I, and I don't have a problem. I'm mm-hmm. glad. Yes. But if you said this a decade ago and I yes. remember you saying it over a decade ago, why didn't it get the traction? Why didn't it get the support? Why wasn't it propped up when Monique said it? I think there's a few reasons why. Number one, it was the messenger. I should just be grateful I got invited to the party. You a big, fat, black woman. How dare you be the one? And then on top of that, you're saying names. You're saying Oprah's name out loud. You're saying Tyler's name out loud. You're saying Lee's name out loud. You're saying Lionsgate out loud. That's not what we do. We say they. We say the people. We say the studio. We say the producers. How dare you actually say our heroes' names? You're very specific. These are our heroes. How could you say their names out loud? Because they're the ones that did it. And if I don't say it out loud, now you see a woman that is swallowing that pain, that is so stressed out. Then you see our sister Taraji P. Henson sit on that platform. And I love that baby because she's a beautiful spirit. Mm -hmm. But to see her that broken, what our community was saying was we have a hard time, some of us, We have a hard time seeing a strong black woman with a back straight and a chin up and a strong black man standing by her side. We have a hard time accepting that, but we can accept seeing a black woman broken. Now it's really serious because she's falling apart. Our community had a hard time with those two things. And when I would hear people say, why is her husband there? Why is he there? It's a sad day when we're questioning why a black man would stand with his black woman. So when you hear black women saying we're the most undervalued, disrespected, underserved, mistreated, violated, exploited, we get all of that. Then you see a black man standing with his black woman saying, not on my watch. And you hear some black men saying, why, why her husband got to be there? We're in a sad state of affairs when we begin to question black love and black unity. So they didn't want to hear me, some of them, because of what I look like, because I spoke about their heroes, and because they saw that man standing right there strong. Did they question the validity, the because we had never seen this before. Not so not so public, not so present. Yes. Did they question you and his relationship? Me and my husband? Yes. When you say question, what is like Because they did, but I want to understand what Because you did. okay. Did they think that was your husband or what was he your manager? Because he's been everything. Yes. He's your lover. He's your manager. Name he's your him. confidant. Name him. He's he's your he's the, the father. Come on, name him. Whatever it is, uh, he's all encompassing. Yes. He's a toolbox with all the tools that Monique needs. All of them. And so when I, I heard people saying that, why is he there? Why does he have to be in every interview? Why does he have to be in the background? Why can't Monique do that? Why not? Why not? Why not? And that when you see, and these are my sisters, but when you see Taraji, when you see Viola, when you see our sisters speaking out, you never see their representation sitting right there with them. Mm-hmm. You never see them saying, listen, we got to fight together. Right. My husband is also my manager, which is my representation. Right. But again, we've been so beat down 
that some of us have a problem with this black man saying, I'm standing right here strong right. and I will not flinch and I will not budge. What a sad state of affairs we are now in where you have people that look like you and I mm -hmm. that would question why this man is standing there. That for the life of me is disheartening. Mm -hmm. When we heard Brother Malcolm say, we've been run amok, we've been hoodwinked, we're now doing it to ourselves. We're now doing it to ourselves. So when you say Monique, it was different because we had never seen that before. You said their names. Mm -hmm. Let me say this. I'm not the first one. Right. I'm not the first one, but we get washed away in history so easily that we start thinking, oh, this is the first one. This is the first one. Her name is Claudette Colvin. And she's not the first one, but she was before Rosa Parks. Mm -hmm. But because Claudette Coven did not fit the picture that they thought she should look like, she was dark skinned and she had coarse hair. And because the, the organization, I believe it was the NAACP, mm -hmm. did not think she would be accepted by the white people, mm -hmm. they had to get somebody that they said the white people could accept. We keep repeating the same thing because what I said is no different than what anyone else is saying. Not, not at all. Right. It was the messenger and it was the way that I'm not putting my head down. I'm not shedding one tear. I'm not going to say, I don't want to say their name because I might get in trouble. I'm going to say all of it. Right. Because when you really think about that little girl coming behind you, what I don't ever want that baby to see is me broken. I don't want her to see me falling apart. And I understand it. I understand how it can happen, Shannon, when you may not have a foundation at home, right. when you may not have that man at home or that woman at home, whomever, that support person saying you're not crazy. Right. I got you. Come on. We're going to go through this. We're going to get through this. So for us, if we start taking things for what they are and get out of our emotions, we would be so far along. Do you believe punishment? Mm. Punishment is not only meant for the perpetrator, but it's also to deter others from said acts. You see it. Do you believe the punishment that was bestowed upon Monique was not only to punish you, you saw it. but to deter others from saying what you said? Well, Shannon, see here, and, and, and I'm going to answer that. But sometimes we act like we don't know our history. See, back in the day when they had us in chains, mm -hmm. they would beat one real good. Right. But in front of every, the others. In front of the others. And they let everybody know what you don't want is that type of ass whooping. Right. So what they said was, we're going to beat Monique really good. We're going to sit her down. And, and, and I made it public. Financially, my family took a hit, Shannon. And when I tell you we took a hit. Right. We took a hit. So when you see our sister go through that, you see her go through and... We act like our eyes didn't see what it saw when we watched that promotion happen mm -hmm. with the color purple. Right. We wanted to act like we didn't see how Oprah Winfrey treated Taraji. In my humble opinion, when you saw her walk up, you saw that there was tension. You saw that there was something happening. Right. And then when you see Taraji write her a love letter, it's like, listen... We got to stand tall and stand strong on what we know. You, We know you were mistreated. We know it wasn't right. We know it was unfair. And then you turn around and say, oh, but Lady O handled it. I have a problem with that. I have a problem with that because that allows Lady O to keep on doing what she's doing. And we're in a position of, I don't want to say nothing because we saw how Monique got whooped. Now, again, that's just my humble right. opinion. But I don't know what else to, I don't know how else to frame that. It's like, listen, you better fix that because you saw what they did to her. You saw how they treated her. Is it a situation, do you believe it's a situation that Oprah might have faced something similar that maybe wasn't as public as you? And, and, and she's looking at it, well, if I faced that, went through it and came out on the other side and look at me, it should be okay. Because sometimes we get that with parents. You know, I struggle. You say my kids should have to struggle sometimes also. Do you think that might be something going on with her? Or you just like, she, there's a disconnect. There's a disconnect. Okay. 
There's a disconnect and there's been a disconnect for years. There's a disconnect. And I think what happens is we place people on these pedestals Mm -hmm. and we say, oh, no, you can't do no wrong. We don't even want to hear it. Right. And when you hear cats say, you know what they do? They don't say anything and they act like it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep talking until you take accountability. Right. Until you say, uncle, I've done this. That's why it was so important. From Oprah Winfrey to Tyler Perry, Lee Daniels. Now, Lee Daniels was the only one I had to deal with. Did you see Lee Daniels apologize? Mm -hmm. He walked out on the stage. stage. Not only did he apologize on stage, that man apologized to our children. That man apologized to our children and said, I need to apologize for what I put y'all through. He's the only one I had to deal with. However, it became a problem with Oprah Winfrey and Tyler Perry that I wouldn't do something and work for free. Now, when you say, well, maybe Oprah feels like she came through it. Why can't you? Well, there's a story with Oprah Winfrey when she was on the show. People are talking. Richard Sher was making $55,000. She was making $22,000. These are her words. It was her co-host. She said, I had to leave because they wasn't paying me fairly. Now you say black woman who did nothing wrong and you're in the midst of this situation because she called me, Tyler Perry called me, Lionsgate called. When you were on the phone with my husband, you said, I agree with Monique. I agree with the position she's taking. But? But when it came time to say it out loud, Oprah Winfrey went totally silent. Now to Tyler Perry's credit, Tyler Perry called us up, right? And he said, I can see the pain in you and I can hear it. And I want to let you know that I, I, I would never do nothing to hurt you. But the conversation kept going on only for Tyler Perry to admit he did start a rumor that I was difficult to work with. He lied only for Tyler Perry to admit I was wrong. And when my movie Boo come out, I'm going to say that, Right. Now, here's where when you did that interview with Kat, I could respect how you do it because Kat said you let them people lie in your face. And your response was, Kat, I don't know if they're lying or not. Right. Because I can only take them at their word. At their word. Right. Yes. Well, we sent you the audio Mm -hmm. of Tyler Perry. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to take me at my word. I want you to hear his words. And what did you hear that man saying? What did you hear that man saying? He said it. What did he say? Is that is Moni, you know you're not supposed to be recording people. No, no. No, no. Let me back up. Okay. Everything we did was legal. And here's where a black woman really gets the kick in the ass. Had I not recorded Tyler Perry, then it would have been my word Word against against his. And then on top of that, it would have been he's so powerful. We can't even pay no attention to that. Right. Well, now I have him on audio, which is legal to do Mm -hmm. where we live. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have him on audio. And do you know what some people then said? Why would you record him? (laughs) <laughs> Just like you sat there and said, you know what's illegal to do. But did you hear what the man said? I, I violated you. Yeah. I mistreated you. Yeah. Do you know, Shannon, that's cost my family tens of millions of dollars? Yeah. Over a lie and a rumor? Is he gonna is he gonna make a he's gonna compensate you for that? I want you to look in your camera. Yes. And I want you to talk to Tyler Perry because you heard what that man said. Mm-hmm. So ask him, will he compensate my family for that? Tyler, will you come on Club Shay Shay and let's have a conversation about the fair compensation for what transpired between you and Monique? You can sit right here and she's sitting right here and you and I can have a conversation. And we'll do you one better. And give me five on that, baby. We'll do you one better, Shay. My husband and I will sit right next to him. See, with this whole situation and some of the people that Kat talked about, ironically, I have this issues with those same people. There were people that reached out to Tyler Perry on my behalf. Okay. And I was grateful for that. Okay. There was Al Sharpton, the Reverend Al Sharpton, civil rights leader. Yeah. I sent him that audio. He listened to it. 
He said, baby, what that man did to you was wrong and you're like my daughter and we're going to have to get him to fix that. Right. We didn't hear from Al Sharpton for six months. The next time we saw Al Sharpton, he was on a podium talking about we don't need to fly commercial because we can fly Tyler Perry's private jet. I said, that's why maybe I'm not hearing back from him. OK, then we had our beautiful sister, Stephanie Mills. Yes. OK, who is she don't play. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. I told her what happened, sent her the audio. Now, I don't know if she listened to that audio or not, but however, she called Tyler Perry. She said, Monique, Tyler Perry does not want to revisit this. Okay, fine. Right. While we're on the phone, Tyler Perry calls her back and says, I will meet with Monique, but not with her husband. Are you ready for this? Yeah. And then Monique has to apologize publicly to say, Oprah and I had nothing to do with messing up her career. But that'd be a lie. I look in the goddamn camera. <laughs> I thought you, I thought that was a stage the way you. Look in the camera. Yes. Because you heard it. Yes. Right? Yes. So when you have, when you hear what this man is saying. So I said, Stephanie, tell Tyler Perry, never will I meet with him without my husband. And I owe no apology, so I'm not going to give one. That goes away. Kevin Hart. Now, you know when Cat Williams said gatekeepers? Yes. Kevin Hart. Mm -hmm. I do his um, podcast. Yes. And I want y'all to re-listen to the podcast so you can hear it for yourself. When he first comes on, he says, you're like my mother, you're like my aunt, you're like my sister. Okay? Mm -hmm. Then we do the podcast. We speak about the Tyler Perry situation. Oprah Winfrey, he said, I don't really know Oprah, but I'm going to reach out to Tyler. I appreciate that. Kevin kept his word. He reached out to Tyler Perry. Kevin Hart called me back about maybe a week or so later. He said, Mo, I talked to Tyler. He said he don't want to revisit it. He said, but I tell you what, let's move past that, Mo. Let's just move past that and let's just do great things. So whatever That's you, what Kevin said. I want you to hear me, Kevin Hart. Let's move past that, Mo. Let's do some great things together. Don't even worry about it. Whatever y'all want to do, I will partner with you. I'll executive produce with you. You just let me know what you want to do. Now, let me say that before we go any further, because okay. I want to make sure I give Kevin Hart his proper credit. When my family was up against the wall, Kevin Hart wrote us a check and said, here you go. We're forever grateful for that. When we were able to give it back, we said, brother, we appreciate you with some interest on top because I don't ever want nobody to think like me and my money. husband. So I want to make sure I put that out there. That was, that brother really helped us out when we needed to be helped out. Then when he came back with, I got you. I didn't ask Kevin Hart to do anything. He said, I'll executive produce. I'll partner with you. I said, good shit, Kevin, because we're in a deal with Endemol and we're trying to get our talk show back. Mo, whatever it is, I got you. Now, Kevin Hart is one of the biggest entertainers right now in the world Correct. right and was then we got off the phone with kevin hart we called in the mall immediately and said kevin hart said whatever we want to do he got us he's gonna partner executive use they was like oh this is incredible because when you put kevin hart name on it you already know what it is correct two weeks go by we get a call from in the mall in the mall says we just got a call from kevin hart's manager dave becky and dave becky said kevin doesn't want anything to do with monique so whatever she told y'all, he doesn't want to do anything with her, nothing. You know, he doesn't want any any kind of relationship with Monique. So what changed between the two weeks and when, and, and plus he gave your check, you gave the money back, then said he would partner with you, executive produce, whatever you need, Mo, hey, we got you. So what transpired or what do you think transpired between then, that two that two week period? Well, soon as we got off the phone and they told us what Kevin manager David Becky said, I called Kevin Hart immediately. I said, hey, baby, we just got off the phone with Endemol, and they said Dave Becky called them up and said, you don't want anything to do with me. He said, Mo, that's, that's a miscommunication. I can tell you right now. I said, wait a minute. Are you okay, though, with this white man calling them up, getting in between our relationship after something you said? He said, Mo, I'm, that's a miscommunication, and we're going to talk Tuesday. Don't worry about it. I'm, I'm telling you right now, it's a miscommunication. That was two years ago. If you talk to him, I talk to him. I've never talked back to Kevin Hart again. So that's what we're faced with. 
When you allow somebody to come in between a relationship with a woman that you said, I'm like your mother, you said, I'm like these things. I didn't ask you for that. So everything that that baby was saying, sitting here, everything he was saying was on the up and up. Because when you hear people say, get the anger out your heart. Oh, man, no one's saying he's lying. No one ever said I was lying. It's so easy to discount and devalue because of what we look like. Right. However, when it comes to Tyler Perry, I will not allow you to discount or devalue because that is your voice on that audio. Mm -hmm. Remember on Good Times mm -hmm. when Penny's mother was whooping up on yep. her and then and she had recorded it. Mm -hmm. That's you on tape. So how does it go from you saying you're going to give me an apology to now I owe you an apology? But what do you want an apology for? What 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 could I possibly owe you an apology for when you've admitted? See, when Lee Daniels says to me, because Cookie from the, the show Empire, yeah. I was offered that role. Now, Taraji tore it up, right. baby. It Listen right. here. However, I was offered that. Then Felita called me back and say, baby girl, they said you're too difficult to work with. But you hear on the audio that a man told David Talbert I was difficult to work with. Do you see how that right. cost my family? Yes. And with no accountability because, oh, it's the great Tyler Perry. No, you've got to be accountable for that. Oprah Winfrey, you've got to be accountable for the things you've done with my family. You've got to be accountable for that. Is there any relationship between you and Tyler and you and Oprah currently? No, no. But I thought there was an apology. I, I read what there uh, that I thought I read somewhere that Oprah had issued you an apology and Tyler had issued an apology. That's not correct. No, no. The only person that's given you an apology. You saw it. It's Lee Daniels. That's the only person. So we are in a place where we're too afraid to call them for what it is. We're too afraid to say if it looked like a duck and it quacked like a duck, what is it, Shannon? It's a duck. Right. So, again, you see the struggle of the black woman as I'm sitting here talking to you. And you say, Mo, but why would you record him? But you heard the man violate me. The first thing wasn't, I can't believe that cat did that to you. It's why would you do it? And we understand it. Right. Because we've been conditioned that way. Because when you... You had to get somehow because when you're telling people these are lies, yes. nobody is believing Monique. So now, even though you have him record his voice and that's him and he's saying he made it up now is no longer. Oh, man, I can't believe he lied on Mo. Mo, why'd you record it? So now they put the onus back on you. Where's the win? How do we win? How does a black woman win when you say, here he is right here? And I look to the community and say, how long do we allow us to keep being exploited, used up, taken advantage of? And because we think somebody can give us an opportunity, mm -hmm. we just say, shh, I'm not going to say nothing. If we keep operating like that, Shannon, you're going to have a whole lot of us sitting right here in this same seat, almost telling the same story. Why do you think Tyler is afraid to meet with you and your husband? Why does it need to be you one on one when he meet with other representatives and 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 the cli their client? What what is it about you that he feels it needs to be just you and he? Does he think your husband is some kind of negative influence on you? He thinks the husband is saying things that that Monique probably wouldn't say if I just had had an opportunity to talk to her one on one. What do you think that is? Let me say <coughs> this. Excuse me. People better be glad my husband is by my side because there are people in Hollywood that know wherever you act up is where I show up. People know in Hollywood, <laughs> baby, Shannon, and I don't say it with a badge of honor. It's just what it is. Well, I've had to say, who you think you're talking to? And we're sitting there with the president of the studio or the com My patience level is not going to allow. I've been molested. I've been violated. So the moment I see you trying to do it, we're going to have to address it. My husband is nothing but a gentleman. And you know why people have a problem with my husband? Because he's right to it. There's no we're going to dance around the bush. He's right to it. Right. And people like Tyler Perry, people like Oprah Winfrey, they look at my husband and say, how dare you be so direct? Right. How dare you not put your eyes down when you're talking to me? 
How dare you do that? My husband is also my manager. Why would he want to exclude my right. management? It's like, Tyler, you should want my husband to be there. You, right. you, you may want him to be sitting right there so that way we can have a conversation that everyone can be heard. Mm -hmm. But I appreciate you, Shannon, because most people are too afraid. That's heard the tape. They're too afraid to say, no, I heard it, and this is what he said. Mm -hmm. I appreciate T.S. Madison because T.S. Madison was the first one to say, no, I heard what he said. Mm -hmm. So when folks were trying to jump on her, she not down for the black woman. Listen, baby, y'all don't even understand the right. fights that sister be having when ain't nobody watching for the black woman. Right. So I appreciate you looking in that camera. Right. Well, I mean, look, sometimes there are some, some black people, some, not all, some, that my grandfather used to say, Mo, is that if you're not careful, you'll become the very thing you despise the most in a person. Now, what do we despise most about Trump supporters, ex-President Trump, is that no matter what he says, no matter what he does, they give him an out. There's some people in our community, no matter what powerful black people say or do in our community, we'll give them an out. And we can't. And we become the very thing we despise the yes. most. What we despise most about President Trump's, ex-President Trump supporters, is that no matter what he does or says, it's okay. Yes. We can't do that. We you can't. can't. We can't. If somebody is wrong, like you said, Mo, if somebody is wrong, we have to be man or woman enough to say they're wrong, regardless of what comes along with that. They don't know. They don't understand what them saying, I'm sorry, will mean for them. See, when I, I read the Because other that's day, not for you. And I'm sorry, it's not for the person that you offended. It's for you. Because currently you're in hostage. Your feelings. Because you have to live with that. You have to live with that. what you've done. So when you see a woman say, me turning 70, I'm so happy because I've never hurt anyone. Stop it. Stop it. Because there's a black woman that has been calling your name for over a decade that you seem to want to make go away. And I know I'm not the only one. Would you what? Would you sit if Oprah called Mo today? Would you sit down and have a conversation with her? Let me tell you what I'll do if Oprah called me today, Shannon Sharp. We will sit down and have a conversation with Oprah Winfrey. We will sit down and have a conversation with Tyler Perry. We will sit down and have a conversation with the presidents of Lionsgate. We will sit down and have a conversation with anyone that is. Bra I'm gonna say brave enough to sit down and have a conversation. But what happens is within seconds. Within seconds, if Tyler Perry was to sit right here, you would say, man, I heard you. What you trying to tell me about this sister? Within seconds, Oprah Winfrey would know that people would say, hold up. See, when I speak about Oprah Winfrey, and let me be clear, I love that sister because she's our sister. Mm -hmm. She just got to come back across the street. We got the light on. When I speak about Oprah Winfrey, I speak about that woman because she's spoken about me. And when you begin to speak about me privately, I'm going to speak about you publicly. Mm. You've been unfair. You've been unjust. And you watched a black woman be thrown under the bus and you said nothing. And here's what's interesting as well. My husband was saying to me, after I won the Oscar award, right? Mm -hmm. And she had the people come, you know, to talk to the Oscar winners. And I go on the stage and I talk to the Oscar winners. Well, when we go to a commercial, the people in the audience, and I say this humbly as my husband was telling me, he said, Mama, they wasn't screaming Oprah. They were screaming Monique, mm -hmm. right? right? So much so, I had to say, y'all gonna shut that shit up now. We get ready to go back on the air. We right. having fun, right. right? He said, but I watched Oprah. He said, and I watched her almost turning her seat like they screaming her name. Now, some people will say, oh, Monique, you're, you're reaching. Well, let me tell you what then happens. The movie The Butler, mm -hmm. that movie was offered to me. Lee Daniels came out and said, I did offer Monique The Butler. But as he said to me, he said, Mo, at the time I didn't have no power and I didn't have no money. So when Oprah said she wanted it, so who played the lead role in The Butler? Oprah Winfrey. Lee Daines was getting ready to do a biopic on Richard Pryor, and he offered me the grandmother. 
Who then calls Lee Daniels and says, I want to be the grandmother. So as you're looking at me, it's the same way I'm looking at that sister. And I'm saying, why don't we sit down and have a conversation? Because the way things could look, it may not be that way, but just the way things look, Oprah. Just the way you would have my family on your show, Oprah. One might say, Mo, well, I mean, if the role of they're looking for a black. Um, big, go ahead and big. say it. Shannon, it's okay for what his words. He wants to say not, fat black woman. Because, if the role looking for a fat black woman, Mo, but, but he not, was like, not, you but know. But I want to uh, keep my podcast, Mo. Uh, Y'all ain't finna cancel this me. That's why we love you, Uncle Shay Shay, because we want you to say it, a fat black woman. Now, me and Oprah fit the damn description, <laughs> Shay. Fat black. Don't we fit it? You, you do. But I'll be right back here to be, I'll be your neighbor up there where you live at. Listen here. Live. Listen here. Listen here. So, <laughs> so, are you lying? No. Now, no. I'm not going to have your big ass sitting here in the <laughs> Hall of Fame and you scared to say shit. Okay. And I want to uh, excuse myself for any of the babies that might be watching this because I wasn't going to say no spicy things. But Shay Shay get me wrong now. Come on, uh, Shay. <laughs> One might say, mm -hmm. or people might say, well, Mo, I mean, the role calls for a, a heavyset black woman. You, Oprah, y'all fit the roles. Yes. How do we know that she wasn't offered the role at long and, and people think that she's better, more, more qualified than you? It don't work like that, Shannon. You can't offer me. Once you say, I want you. Right. That's what it is. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But I don't have the money <coughs> to fund a production. Right. I don't have the connections to go to the studio and say, listen, I want to do this movie. She does. Right. So when Lee says, hey, baby, she got the money. Go get it. get it. But someone would just say, how is that working out like that? How is that happening like that? Mm -hmm. How is it that things that was offered to Monique, you seem to be playing? Now, I, I told Oprah about that. See, everything we're saying to you right now. You ha he was having a conversation with her. Listen here. I don't play the behind the back. I don't play the I'm going to share with Shannon. There's one thing I will share with you that I've not shared with anybody. Okay. But I don't play the behind the back and all of that. I say, listen, let me try to get to you first. Now, if you avoid me. Okay. okay, but I tried to be respectful. I tried to call you first. When she had my family on her show, I tried to call you first. I tried to talk to you privately, but then you became the great, the great mighty Oprah Winfrey and you were too busy to talk. Well, now I'm going to talk about it. This woman has overstepped with me so in so many ways that somebody would say, if we wasn't Monique and Oprah Winfrey in the entertainment business, and we was Monique and Oprah Winfrey that worked at Costco. <laughs> I see you in the break room. <laughs> I see you at your cash register. Because she's overstepped. Wow. So, I don't know, Monique. This might be the, the term crossing of the Rubicon. We might be going too far. Can I don't, how do you, if you feel that way, because clearly if you feel this way. Now, yes. I, I get why you feel this way. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know this. I don't, I, I'm taking you at your word. Now, not, 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 not the Tyler because yes. I, I've listened to the audio. Yes. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about Oprah. Yes. I'm just taking you at your word. Yes. If you feel this way, is it possible she feels the exact same way about you? How could she? How could she? What have I taken from Oprah? When did I have Oprah's mother and father on my show? Mm -hmm. When did I have anybody come and speak about Oprah Winfrey on the Monique show? That's never happened. So how could she feel that way? Would you have done that? Had her family on? Yeah. Let me tell you how we operate. When we had the Monique show, there was a comedian on there. Mm -hmm. And he was trying to joke T.I.'s wife, Tiny. My husband walked out in the middle of his set. He said, cut. He said, brother, we don't do that here. We uplift our folks. Mm -hmm. We don't play that. So no, I would not have done that. When Oprah Winfrey had my family, and, and, and I'll, I'll tell y'all, and I'm looking, I'm looking around, baby, because there are people here. Yes. Okay, and I don't yeah. want to be rude to the people at Shay Shay's club. You got other people in the club, mm -hmm. right? When Oprah Winfrey called me up and she said, I got a call from your brother. And this is after I won the Oscar Award, mm -hmm. right? And your brother wants to come on the show and he wants to apologize to you for molesting you. And he wants to tell other people 
how to wa- look out for a predator. Right. I said, Oprah, I said, I don't want anything to do with that cat. I said, but, and then she said, well, if you want me to scratch the show, I will scratch it. I said, sis, don't scratch it because he could be a different person. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to get in the way if that cat is a different person. I just don't want no parts of it. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. When I hung up that phone, Shannon, I was like, I appreciate that sister. Like she didn't have to call me. She didn't. She didn't have to call me and say, I'm going to have your brother. Right. I start seeing commercials with my mother and my father and my other brother who used to be my manager, Mm -hmm. who knew the fear that I had with the brother that was up on stage. Right. Mm -hmm. We never talked about my mother being there. She never told you that. You know how you feel about your grandparents? Yes, absolutely. You know the honor and the, how you speak about them? Mm-hmm. Imagine you then seeing your granddaddy and your grandmama on a show, and they're talking about somebody that violated you, and that woman didn't tell you that they were going to be there. How would you feel? I would feel like you, feel like you felt betrayed. That is exactly how I felt, and how I feel. And it's not, oh, I'm in a... No, I understand it. But you portrayed me, sister. And I'm not the only one. Because at the time when she called you, she said it was just your brother. Just my brother. And when my mother was on that show, do you know what I had to deal with, Shannon? What's that? I would be in the store. And I would have elderly women coming up to me. And they would say, your mama ain't shit. Now, they wasn't lying, Shannon, okay? <laughs> they wasn't lying, baby. Sometimes you got to let the truth be the goddamn truth. Sometimes you got to just go with it. But still, it's my mother. It's your mom. And I'm in here and I, because when she went, I'm having to defend something. And I got that often with them telling me what my mother wasn't because you did not tell me. Had Oprah Winfrey said, I'm going to have your mama, I'd have said, shut that shit Scratch down. It. I don't need nobody seeing my mama be greedy. I don't need the world see. Shut it down. Now, there's a white woman named Barbara Walters. Mm-hmm. They called her first. And she said, Monique, I told your family, I can't do that to you. I wouldn't do that to you. Mm -hmm. You just won that award. Like, why would I do that? Yeah, this, I mean, you're here. Why would I bring something that I know that you don't want to talk about? You lived it. Why do I need to replay it again? Ask her. Your camera right there. But I I was, I was trying to get I know, baby, but but, but ask her. See, this is where it get juicy, right? Because you're, you're, you're saying the right things, but you're asking me questions that I can't answer. Right. I can't answer why Oprah Winfrey did what Oprah Winfrey did. Only Oprah Winfrey can answer for her actions. Yes. So again, stop being scared. No, I'm not. I knew that would get him up, man. I knew that would pop him back in, baby. I knew that would get up a Shay Shay. But but even even this show, I have a producer and I give him a lot of leeway. But I've had people reach out and say, well, a family member said something and I want to come on your show and refute it. That ain't what we do here. Right. It's like it ain't gonna happen. It's almost you don't cross that barrier. Mm -mm. We don't don't do we don't do the family thing. You don't do the family thing. I know it's traumatic, and if you don't want to have to relive it, you don't have to. What you went through with your brother. Yes. When you going through that, Mm -hmm. how is that impacting you? During that time, because I think you're seven to Mm -hmm. Mm thirteen. You better do your damn homework, Shannon Shaw. And the impact that it's had on you and your relationship with men. Oh. Shannon trying to be a journalist. No, 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 no. Shannon, I throw this look at you. (laughs) My damn it, you see you trying to come up, Bubba Walters. Get off my brother. (laughs) What impact? Wow. Remember when you said, and I don't know if you said this, so I don't want to quote it because I could be wrong. Okay. But someone said, Shannon Sharp don't mess with black women. Mm-hmm. And before you go any further, can I say this? Please. My grandmother told me something when I was a little boy. She said, boy, never chase a lie. Come on, baby. 
Come on. Come on. I, why? And you never said that, right? I, I've never said Okay, so that's why I said. I got black kids. That's what I said. I said, them babies black, black. Yes. They not confusing. Yes. We ain't trying to see if she Latin or Dominican. They black, black. Okay. They mama got black, black. Everybody yeah. that she yes. had to mess with yeah. was black, black. Yes. Right? Yes. Black, black. Okay? So, they, there's this thing with us mm -hmm. that you can't tell us nothing. And oftentimes when a black woman's been traumatized, she's guarded. Now you take a black woman that's been traumatized and now she got a little bit of money. And you take black men, some of them, that is impressed with the money. So I can say to you what I want to. Not being totally disrespectful, but you know who's running this. Yeah. You know how we do this. Mm -hmm. I've always had an aggressive personality. Yes. I have always jumped with, if I think you're trying to violate. So to say what did that do to me, it, it made me like this. And it made me say, I'll get you before you can get me. Because mm -hmm. I know what it's like to not be in control of what you're taking from me. Right. I know what it's like to be in a position where there's nothing I can do, right? So when it came to men, baby, listen, I had my, my share, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I was no whore, mm -hmm. but I was close. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, come on now, Shannon, get back to me. Now get back to me and call oh. me later. Call me later, Shannon. <laughs> Call me later, baby. Come Lord on. Have mercy, because Lord. you a football player with a lot of money. Mm -hmm. When you go into a city and you was in your prime, yeah. you had your pick. It's no different for a woman. When I went into a city, everybody wanted to be Professor Ogilvy. <laughs> hey, and I would pick him. Okay, you look like you could be. But see, here's the thing. Now, Mo, all of a sudden, you being this fat black woman, it ain't a problem. You gotta remember, I remember you said it wasn't. Well, let me say this. First. It wasn't never a problem with me being a fat black woman, because real black men, they like them in all yeah, shapes and yeah, sizes, yeah. all complexions. Mm -hmm. It is these new Negroes that get into she gotta be this way, she gotta be that way. But real black men, if you can bake a pound cake naked, <laughs> <laughs> what y'all talking about? What you talking about? But <coughs> what, what, what it did though was, and this is why. I feel the way I feel about my husband. Okay. I remember him saying to me one night, because when we first got together, I was, I was a handful, Shannon. Mm -hmm. And that's when I was really sick mm -hmm. in the way that I thought. Right. And he said, check this out. You've used your brother molesting you as a crutch for your bad behavior. Oh. He said, and I won't allow that. He said, when you was a little girl, there was nothing you can do about it. But now as a grown woman, every choice and decision you make, it is yours. And I will not allow you to keep on saying, because of my brother. Because at what point do you take accountability for you? Baby, that grew me up in that night. That grew my ass up that night so fast because I wanted, I wanted to hear what my, psycho my psychiatrist was saying to me. I understand. My husband was like, check this out. Mm -mm. Check this out. You are in control of you. Every choice and decision you make, every one you lay down with, that was your choice. You've never come back to me and said you were raped as a grown woman. You've never said that. So stop holding on to that crutch. Stop holding on to that victim. Because this happened to me. I, I, I'm, I'm mad for days. And I come up out of that. And when I went to the psychiatrist, right? Mm -hmm. Everything my husband said to me, the psychiatrist said to me, but he said, I needed you to go to somebody that had no dog in the fight because I didn't want you to think I was judging you. I didn't want you to think that because I know the history, I'm pointing my finger. So when I would go to that psychiatrist, Dr. Cassandra Wanzo, she's incredible. Y'all want to know about red bottom shoes? Let me tell you somebody that's going to get your mind right. Dr. Cassandra Wanzo, this woman was incredible. But every time I would go to session, everything she said, my husband had already told me. So me and men, I had to come to grips with that. Mm -hmm. I had to come to grips with being an insecure fat girl. And I had to come to grips with my sister telling me, ain't no man gonna ever really want you because you're fat. I had to come to grips with, my father was like, listen, I'm here, but I'm really not. I had to come to grips with those things.
So my way of coming to grips with those things was now I'm a boss. I'm independent and I'm empowered. Don't you know I run this? See, I too went to the Oprah Winfrey University of empowerment and you don't need a man to make it. Right. I signed up. Right. And I was at the top of the class till I realized I was going to bed empty. Mm. I was going to bed with nothing but stuff. I did not want to be the poor little rich girl who have everything but nothing at all. Don't that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. I did not want to be that, Shannon. So even for the men, even for the men that I was with, right? You were with them. I wasn't? No. Okay, talk to me, Shannon. Let that liquor use you. That was I wasn't a, with them. That was just a body for the lonely. <laughs> liquor makes shit sound good, won't it? Liquor will make you not sound like a whore. It was just a body for the lonely. Let me tell you what my husband told me, right? Because I was in tears. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I, I, I was, I was a whore. I was crying. I was, cause, cause, when you come to grips with it, when you realize how many. When you realize what you've done and you got to come to grips with it and now I'm sitting in front of the greatest person I've ever met and I got to say, I have been with this many. And my husband looked at me and said, Mama, you ain't no whore. You just have friendly pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't he make it right? That's all I had was friendly pussy. So for you whores out there, you... Mm -mm. Uh, no, 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 what it is. Friendly pussy. Right. That's what he told me. <laughs> he made it right. So did you ever have a good relationship with your father? Yes. When I was a little girl. Little. When I was a little girl, my father could do no wrong. When I was a little girl, baby, my father would put me in that car and he would go to the cut rate store and he'd get his liquor and he'd go over Mr. Johnny house. Now, I'm a little girl, right? right. He'd go over Mr. Johnny house and him and Mr. Johnny go in the back and I could smell the reefer, but I didn't know it was reefer, right? right. And they smoke and they had their little drink and they come back out. I was attached to him. Mm-hmm. Me and my father started having a problem when what he was saying to me wasn't making sense. What did he say? And now I'm about 13. Okay. He would just, he was, he was a bullshitter. Right. But he was a good sounding bullshitter. Right. Like, and so as a kid, you'd be like, my father know everything. everything. But once I started growing up mm -hmm. and I started seeing the treatment that he gave my mother, mm. never physically abusive, but mentally, mentally, they abused one another. I won't just put it on, but yeah. once I started questioning him, on just some of his decisions and choices, right. I became the bad person. And I went to my grandmother one time, Mimi. Yeah. I talk about her you in have a Netflix very close special. relationship with your grandmother. Right? As did I. And my father, this was one incident that sent me to my grandmother, bent over crying. Mm -hmm. I was trying to get a Ford Festiva, right? Mm -hmm. It was four gears. Right. Okay. It was about $2, but I didn't have the $2. Right. And I needed a cosigner. Mm. Right? Yeah. So I asked my father, please co-sign for me to get this for Festival. And I'ma quote him. He said, Nikki, you won't fuck up my credit. And I'm like, well, what have I ever done to make you think I would fuck up your credit? I, I pay my rent on time. I'm responsible. I go to work. No. The next week, not only did he co-sign for my sister, he just signed for my sister. Like he put the car in his, his name, name. Right? I go to my grandmother and I'm like, Mimi, why would he do that? Like, what? she said, Nikki, every parent knows their weakest link. And every parent knows the one that's going to be okay. She said, you're going to be okay. At that point, I wiped my tears. And I'm glad he didn't co-sign. I'm glad I had to bust my ass to get it. I'm glad I had to figure it out. I'm glad he didn't just come and rescue it. I had to figure it out. So that's why right now when I sit here and you go through dec a decade of being blackballed or whatever, mm -hmm. you're difficult and all that, it allowed me to keep standing. Mm -hmm. It allowed me not to, it allowed me not to go sit on a couch with Oprah Winfrey and say, I'm sorry for nothing I've ever done to you. Right. That's what those lessons taught me. Stand in it and stand strong unapologetically. You speak a lot during this interview, you spoke a lot about curses and the trauma. How do we break that generational trauma, that curse that is in our community? What we've said from the beginning, and that's truth. It's just the truth. We get so comfortable based off of lies that the lies become the truth. Mm -hmm. I think if we just started dealing with the truth. Address it. it. Address it. Even when it doesn't put you in a good light. 
it eventually does put you in the good light because then people start talking about your honor mm -hmm. and your character right. and your integrity. If I've wronged you, please tell me. Right. Please tell me and then show me where I've wronged you. If you can say, Monique, this is what you did right here, then I owe you an apology. But if our community dealt in truth, how much further would we be? That's it. That's how, that's how I think we make it better. Right. We deal in the absolute truth. But sometimes, you know, it's kind of like what I, I tell people, I would explain to someone when I said, just imagine you went to the doctor and Lord forbid this happened. You have cancer, but we're not going to treat it. It's going to go away. No doctor would tell you that. You have something going on. We're not going to talk about it. It'll just go away. That's what they bank on. That's what they bank on. And too many of our black women have gone to their graves. They've left here in despair. Mm -hmm. They've left here broken hearted, broken. broken, broke down. And we got a chance to see it in live and in person with our beautiful sister Taraji Henson. Right. Want to join Club Shay Shay? Become an official member by hitting that subscribe button where you never know who's going to be joining us for drinks and conversation. Don't be late to the party because you know we like to do something before two something.